Hey y'all, Angie M here. Wow, I feel like we're at a really weird angle with this thing today. I don't know. I don't know, I was just gonna do a little get ready with me. I completely fried myself today. I was gonna film a get ready with me earlier, but I had something come up and I wasn't paying attention to the time. And then by the time I looked down, my lunch hour was like gone. And I was like, holy, I just had things to do. Wow, these clips really don't feel comfortable. Anyway, anyway, it's a thing, it's a thing. So we're just gonna do a little get ready with me and call it a moment. Maybe I can lower this just a little bit. It doesn't feel so, I'll just scoot forward. This doesn't feel so weird. I'm also all over the place with like looks that I wanna do. So I am starting out with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Invisipink for priming the eyes. Wax them on there. Really haven't been doing my makeup a whole lot lately. I don't know. It, I'm just, I'm just out of it on on videos and wanting to do my makeup. I'm just feeling lazy, run down. I suppose like today, I, I like I said, I kind of burnt myself out, and I was wondering why. I felt so out of it by the end of the day, you know, for my work day. And I was just like, man, I am dragging. I can't think. I can't keep anything straight. My brain hurts. And then I realized, oh, I was working on something and got all excited. And sometimes the things that are more detailed and require more brain power, for lack of a better term, take a little bit more just time and energy. I know that this is supposed to be invisible. I to me, it seems like it has a lightning effect. It's also kind of sticky. I didn't notice that last time. I'm just gonna close my eyes and do one of these numbers. My So my Too Faced like sinks in and isn't sticky at all. I'm going to be using this Handy Dandy Revolution palette. This is the Forever Flawless palette. I really like the colors inside of it. I think I'm just gonna be going with the mattes. I do want to do a little swatchy of this, but I'm gonna do it separate of this video just because I can't be bothered right now. Just gonna grab some brushes. I don't have a particular look in mind at all. So I like Tail feather and macaw. Maybe we're gonna see what we can do with that. All right, so I'm gonna start out with tail feather. I'm just trying to dust off a brush here really quickly. I'm gonna start off with a tail feather. I just wanted more color in my collection. And I thought this would be a good way to get the more color without spending a ton of money. All right, I am not going to call that out as patchy on the shadow. I did kind of apply that like a, a dink and I have not, wow, it is really not getting in that crease at all, is it? Maybe I will call it in the shadow. I don't know if it is the Fenty or if it's the shadow, but it is not sticking in that crease. I mean, there's there's literally a line. When I said that the primer felt sticky, I wonder if it was sticking and it's now not allowing the pickup of product because it was sticking in my hooded eyes. I wonder. I also noticed pulling on the inside here that made it look like it was skipping and it's not sticking to the inner corner at all. Although it did seem, at first I thought it was patchy up here above my crease but it does blend fairly well. 
That's, that's weird. That's, I don't know that that is, I don't, I'm going to have to bring my Too Faced back down. I don't know that that is the eyeshadow. I think that's the primer. Let's see if I can stick it in the crease this way. Because there is literally like a line where my hood is at its deepest. And that did not color in at all. Wow. I mean, it is now that I'm pointedly telling it it's going to accept color. I'm just going to fill in that inner corner as well. In some ways, I feel like the shadow is actually performing brilliantly. So again, I don't know if the problem is the primer or the shadow. Because it filled so so beautifully in some areas. I'm just going to take a different brush. And we're going to go into that blue macaw shade. That gave some chalky kickback in the pan. That's all right. It's not giving the color saturation that I thought it would. So I'm just going to load up the brush a little bit. Some color. Okay. Go back into Tail Feather. And just... I want to blend out here a little bit. I want to see just how how well it blends into each other. So it's not being muddy. It's just making the expected shade of purple, which is actually kind of neat. So I'm not going to bang on it too hard. It, it actually looks like those two shades went together to make this adventure shade. So not, not going to be a thing, but just know that if you want to use the colors separately, you are going to need to make sure you leave a blank, split, the blank space or do a legit cut crease so that they are not blending because if they do blend, you get a different color. Now I'm gonna be, because I had to build up that first one, we are gonna be a little less delicate on the second one and I am gonna pick up more product. It could be the brush too. It's just not getting in that hood. I am not leaving myself the space I want on the eyelid. All right, all right. Yeah, so it starts out patchy, but it builds up. Again, it could be the primer, it could be me, it could be the brush, who knows. I also need to pluck my brows. The hair is quickly growing. And it's gonna look a little clownish. At least it feels that way to me because this is not, this is not my everyday jam. Again, I just wanna, I wanna play with some color, all right? I want some color in my life. I just want to strengthen out the actual crease. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab that blue. Gosh, there's a darker blue in here too. Okay, 
It is intense. I mean, we're going for it. All right, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna grab some of that tail feather. This. Blend that so I get a little bit of that purple feel too. And then I want to blend it with a crease crease because that is going to do what it wants to do. Put it eyes so we get a little bit more of that purple carried through that is just because of the mixing of color. All right. And then for under the eyes, I'm going to use the same brush I've been using, except I'm gonna go in that blue shade. So it's not as heavily pinked. I'm just gonna come underneath. And let it kind of make that purple. I did get some fallout, but I think that was because the first pass I was new to with it. All right, I'm gonna pick up some of that tail feather and I'm gonna dust it off. And then I pick up some of the blue so I can still get the same purple effect, purple-ish effect on this eye. I'm not gonna bring it all the way in. Now, I think that for the inner inner corner, this guy right here, this canary, would be really cool, but I also like this this orange toucan, toucan play. So I'm just gonna take some canary. Just lightly. And then I'm gonna take that same canary and just wrap it under. Again, a little bit clownish, not really gonna care. Color to me is going to feel that way until I am more comfortable using it is what's going to happen. Let's do some brow work. I'm just going to grab my Anastasia and Brunette. It had a really strong smell when I opened it. We're not going to use this. I'm going to have to get a new brow product because this smells weird. That, that, not good, not good. The smell is very... Not good. And for brows, I have my brow ultra slim from Maybelline. <laughs> so let's let's just rock this guy for a hot minute. Wow. Okay, I am not liking that at all. So my personal thing is to go very slow, quickly, but to not make obvious, obvious, like, hey, I colored in my brows. So I like being quick and kind of flicking because then it to me, it fills the brows, but when I'm doing it, I'm either not getting a line. So I almost have to push harder to get 
align with this. Wow. You gotta be really aggressive and then that's what it looks like. And I'm not about that light. I'm not a huge fan of obvious stuff. So I'm just gonna try to blend some of that. If I practiced with this more and it was something I was more comfortable with, I would feel different. At a distance and blurry because I have my glasses on, it doesn't look awful to me. That doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. So let's go ahead. Just get our lashes going. My double wear. Get those. I really can't wait to see how this shadow lasts. It's the end of the day, so it's not gonna be like a full day wear test. But it is kind of, it is, so it is chalky. I mean, it's not like children's chalk. I don't feel like I'm outside playing with sidewalk chalk when I use it. But as much as I don't mind a dusty palette because I've had some really awesome dusty palettes, like especially from the Lorac, where you can get a ton of kickback. This this is different than that. This dusty is is different. It is a different quality point. But if it works okay, and if it works okay with other with other palettes that I have, for someone like me who isn't huge into purchasing colorful palettes, it's sufficient. Now, if I get more into color, and I'm just for my cheeks, I'm going to use this Cheeks Out from Fenty Drama in drama class. I like it. I have been using it quite a bit. And it looks harsh at first, but it wears so beautifully. Hopefully I can keep jibber jabbering long enough for you to see it settle down. But it really does settle. Now in this lighting, it might not look like it. In natural lighting though, it just settles into this very beautiful wearable look. It's more pink than violet. Turning violet, violet. It's not that shade of violet, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not that blue purple, it's a pink purple. Now, usually I would do something to sort of match, you know, like, hey, this is what I look like when I get some sun. And I do have some sun. So my freckles are coming out. But that's about it. So I just did a wash of that on my forehead too. I don't even know how visible that is. But this is like like it's settling down. The reason you can only you can still see it so well is because <laughs> I have the soft box on and that light is going to catch it. In natural light, it is going to look very nice. And then I have sexual content from NARS. I've been having a difficult time finding a pink, and I realized when I used this today that this is the cool tone pink I kind of want it. And the vibe I want. So I should just stop looking and use what I have in my collection already. But that is it. I mean, yeah, I'm not I'm not mad at how how the shadow looks. It's just it's it's really interesting. I wish so like they had a deeper blue, but I mean, on a whole, it's not it's not bad at all. So I am kind of impressed, kind of pleasantly surprised. Do I think it is on par with some of the others that I have? I will say, first impression, first use of this, they they are beautiful in terms of looking at them. My alter ego is a better quality ish 
it's gonna depend on how it wears because what separates this from alter ego right now would be wear time. Now, if this stays vibrant and beautiful and lasts, I would put them, their price points are pretty much the same and I would put them on equal footing. The texture of the shadows, while a little bit dusty, almost to chalky, not quite chalky, I don't get that from the Alter Ego palettes. Now, if I were comparing Revolution to the quality of my Charlotte Tilbury, mm -mm. and I also think Alter Ego is a little bit easily blended, where this really seems like you're going to build it, but at the same time, I had spots where it did blend, and it blended in an interesting way and created new colors. So... I'm kind of okay with that as well. I, I think that that might actually be a uniqueness and a big plus for the Revolution palette because if blending really does truly create new colors, you know, now it, it's similar to a color that's in there, let's be honest. But if it does create new colors when you're blending and that is something that is your jam, I could see that as being a huge bonus because it does add to the dimension of shadows. Um, in terms of Natasha Denona, see, I can have issues with Natasha Denona blending. So, like, I can take higher-end palettes and just on the first use with the Revolution palette, I can say, look, there are some, some cons for the Revolution palette, but I have some high-end palettes that I would attribute the same cons to, that, that you really have to know how to work with them, whether or not they'll work best with your fingers, whether or not they're gonna work better with a brush, what kind of brush, a fluffy brush, a dense brush, you know, a wide fan brush. So that is what it is with that. I, again, we'll see, we'll have to see. I'm not gonna edit this right away, so maybe I will do a check-in later if I remember and just show you guys how it wears. I did not, I intended to and did not prime. I have not been priming with the Fenty blush just because it's been escaping my mind. So that is a thing. And I'm gonna have to get myself a new brow product because this has gone off and gone stinky. We don't want stinky brow products here. So if I remember, <laughs> I will add on just a follow up because I'm probably gonna wear this for like five hours before I take, you know, before I'm taking it off for bed. So it's not gonna be like a normal, hey, I put this on at 5.30 this morning and now it's nine o'clock at night, here you go. This is gonna be a much shorter duration thing and I'm not very good at remembering to give you guys, hey, this is how it wore at the end of the day. So is what it is. I will catch you all in the next one, if not more at the end of this. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me. We are going to try to get some more color on the channel because I realize I am very, I'm very basic and very beige and I tend to gravitate towards the same bronzy and gold tones over and over and over again. Wanted a little bit of color and a little bit of life and I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I do feel like I could could get the outer corners better. I do pull, have a tendency to pull down instead of out. And I think if I pulled out, it would look a little bit, it would look a little different. I am trying and having a hard time getting that technique. Some of it is me, some of it is the brushes I use, some of it is just the trying to get things on quickly and not necessarily going for artistry points. So, so it is a thing. But if you're at your local Target, you know, I used to hate when people said that, but now that I'm of a certain age, it is it is the Target. But if you're at your local Target, they do carry Revolution. That is where I picked this up. It was $15. Go ahead, give it a try. I mean, who knows? It might work for you where it doesn't work for someone else. Eye primers also make a big difference. So it might perform differently with the Fenty primer than it does with the Too Faced primer or other primers that you may be using because not all primers are created equally and some of them do different things and hold color better and give you better saturation. The Fenty promises to do that. I don't necessarily know that I've ever really had a problem with the Too Faced, but I've never compared it to, to others outside of a CoverGirl primer in a very serious way. So, okay, now I will catch you on the next one. As always, thanks for hanging out.